With the start of the new year comes the Lunar New Year, a holiday for families. On this day, families come together, cook delicious food, and have a good time. But 32 year old Jiahan isn't happy. She is an out of work freelancer, but most would say that she is unemployed, as she is cooking for the guests who have yet to arrive. Her mother is watching a cute video of her grandson, but Jia is irritated that they are getting in her way and eating the food she cooked before everyone arrives. When she suggests that her parents should cook the food since they are eating it, Jia's mother reminds her that cooking is the least she could do since she lives at home and doesn't even pay rent. Jia's sister, Jimin, arrives with her family and her mother embraces her granddaughter. Jimin's husband is carrying the grandson and Jimin is exhausted from the trip and wants to sit down. Jia appears out of the shadows to greet her little sister with an almost fake smile. Jia says she is happy to see her and hands her a flower print apron. Jimin responds by noting that the apron looks great on Jia and mocks her relationship status by saying all she needs to do now is walk down the aisle. But Jia doesn't find the joke funny. She insists Jimin puts on the apron to help her cook with a lifeless expression. Jia's mom is not impressed and hits her. Jia just wants someone else to cook. But Jimin's husband points out that Jimin is tired enough as is, suggesting she is pregnant with a third child. This is big news for the family and they start eating. Soon after, Jia is outside smoking and angry at her sister for her life and suggesting she meet with a guy she knows. Jia's sulking is interrupted by an unknown man who comments on Jia still having a foul mouth. This man is eating chicken breast in a smoking area which confuses Jia. The man reveals that his name is Minchil Jin and that he used to live next door and wear headphones a lot. Jia initially doesn't remember him but then realizes that he used to be a scrawny gamer kid. Minchil didn't think he changed that much though. But Jia insists that he changed a lot and notes that him eating chicken breast in a smoking area is strange. Minchil explains he is here because his family wasn't happy with him not eating the Lunar New Year food because they had too many calories. Jia recalls that Minchil is 32 years old, just like her. They used to live in the same building and were childhood friends, but not by choice. Minchil was the shy kid that didn't get along with anyone in class. But Jia doesn't see the point in reminiscing and is wondering how Minchil changed so much. She concludes that the city life changed him and he is now an assistant manager programmer at a well-known company and seems to live a decent life. Jia compares Minchil to her life, where she constantly gets scolded at home and is unemployed, and is shocked that Minchil is doing better than her. She starts to sulk again, but Minchil interrupts her and asks how she is doing. Jia deflects the question and Minchil says that he's just been living and while he thinks he's doing great, his parents think otherwise. His parents have been nagging him to get married and even signed up for a dating service with a registration fee of $5,000. Minchil assumes Jia isn't in the same situation but she is. Then, Jia suggests that they get married. Minchil is shocked and Jia explains that since their parents are nagging them to get married, they should just get married to fix the problem. It would be a win-win scenario. To Jia's surprise, Minchil asks Jia's dad for his blessing and they get married. They go to a tropical location for their honeymoon and while she is drinking on the first night of her honeymoon, she finally realizes what just happened. She is shocked that she's not in a dream and is in another country married to Minchil. Jia and Minchil are now getting ready for bed and Minchil is searching through his suitcase for something that would make their first night together good. Jia assumes that he is talking about something dirty and gets embarrassed, saying she is not ready. To her surprise, Minchil hands her earplugs. He says that sometimes he snores and then goes to sleep. When Minchil starts snoring, Jia uses the earplugs and goes to sleep, noting that Minchil is very practical and prepared. The next day, Jia is concerned that her happy honeymoon can be disastrous if they start fighting. As Jia is carefully choosing her clothes, Minchil appears in unfashionable but comfortable clothing and asks how much longer Jia is going to take. He is even wearing socks with sandals. Minchil asks if it matters and Jia says it does because she will be looking. Since their schedule isn't tight, they go clothes shopping. While Jia doesn't know much about fashion, she thought anything else would be better. She was wrong. Minchil comes out in a red and blue outfit with suspenders. His justification is that the colors are bright so he won't get hit by a car. Jia gives him a shirt and pants to try and she says they look nice to her. Minchil proceeds to ask the clerk for seven sets of the outfit. Jia is outraged but Minchil says that since it looks good, he should have several of them. Jia decides to pick out a few new outfits so he can rotate between them. While she is looking, Minchil notices the swimsuits. This prompts him to ask Jia if he can pick out a swimsuit for her for their banana boat ride. 
Jia agrees without thinking but is embarrassed when she realizes what he asked. Jia and Minchiel finished shopping and are heading toward the shore. But, Jia is still embarrassed that Minchiel picked out her swimsuit. She is obligated to wear it at their next activity and doesn't even know what kind of swimsuit he bought. Jia thinks he bought a sexy one, but that was not the case. Minchiel bought her a wetsuit to match his. To Minchiel, this was the best choice because they are comfortable and insulated. But to Jia, his choice is embarrassing because this is their honeymoon and everyone else is in bikinis and swim shorts. She was concerned that it would be too hot. To her surprise, the wetsuit was very comfortable. The two had a wonderful time on the banana boat, eating and taking pictures. Toward the end of the day, Jia and Minchiel were walking on the beach. Jia wants to do as much as possible because the trip was expensive. But, Minchiel is concerned that Jia is tired and points out an injury on her heel. Jia was too caught up in the fun to notice it. Minchiel offers to give Jia a piggyback ride because walking on an injured heel must hurt. Jia is hesitant because of the schedule, but she eventually hops on Minchiel's back. Jia is embarrassed and asks if she is heavy. Minchiel points out how her weight makes it a good workout and Jia is offended by this. As they are going, Jia feels comfort from Minchiel's back. Jia notices how beautiful the sunset is and insists they take a picture. Minchiel doesn't want to, but Jia says that they should live in the moment. Back at the hotel, Jia is looking at the picture and remembers her sister saying that couples normally fight on their honeymoon. But, Jia and Minchiel didn't fight and they had a lot of fun. But, Jia is still embarrassed about being on Minchiel's broad warm back. This feeling quickly goes away as she sees Minchiel sleeping. She is satisfied with the trip. Back in Korea, Jia's mom made a lot of food and packed boxes to celebrate her coming back and so she can move in with Minchiel. Jia is apprehensive but remembers that she agreed to this when she got married. After the move, Minchiel presents Jia with a paper. Jia remembers something random about a cartoon theme song. The lyrics were just do it, just do it. It's okay to make mistakes because you aren't an adult yet. Jia is just realizing now that this means that you're screwed if you make mistakes as an adult. The point is that since Jia said they should get married, her life has spiraled out of control and now she is living with Minchiel. Back the paper. The paper is a contract for living together. Jia is shocked and throws it on the floor. She accepts that they need a contract and they each write three conditions. Minchiel's rules are no smoking, don't bother mouse and say something if something is wrong. Jia's rules are don't enter a room without knocking, don't force anything and communicate if something is wrong. Jia is outraged about the no smoking rule. Not even her dad could get her to stop. But, Minchiel doesn't like the smell so he says to smoke in moderation. Jia asks who Mouse is. Mouse is Minchiel's cat who is currently at Jia's feet. The cat is named Mouse because cats like mice. Jia eventually says she likes cats but asks what would happen if she didn't. Minchiel says that he would just get another room for Jia to live in. Money wouldn't be a problem because Minchiel is serious about marriage. They agree on the rest of the terms and form an official contract. Minchiel adds one more thing. Any party can terminate the contract marriage at any time. Jia foreshadows that the contract will bring them many tears and laughs. On the first night living together, Jia decides to not unpack yet and order some furniture. Minchiel goes back to work tomorrow and Jia is anxious about living with someone other than her family. Minchiel, on the other hand, is not worried and is gaming. The next day, Jia is woken to the sound of Minchiel cooking breakfast. Jia is impressed and decides to eat since she's up. But, this feeling quickly went away as Minchiel put the ingredients into a blender to make a chicken breast smoothie. Jia thinks it tastes terrible and asks if they are having anything else. Minchiel says yes and hands her a protein bar. Jia is mad and complains that this isn't real food and comments how Minchiel is going to eat a delicious lunch at work by himself. Minchiel disproves this by revealing his healthy lunch. Jia looks in the fridge for something to eat and it's filled with healthy food. Jia has a newfound gratitude toward her mom's cooking. Seeing Jia like this, Minchiel suggests Jia go out and get breakfast by herself. Jia asks if that's okay and Minchiel says that all he needs is his smoothie. Jia has been in the habit of eating with her family but remembers this is a contract marriage. Minchiel leaves and Jia says she's going to get a job soon and that she'll see him at dinner. The moment Minchiel leaves, Jia takes back her words and proudly says she's going to stay unemployed until her bank is empty. Minchiel is walking to work and gets into the car of his colleague, Sang Yu Choi. He is surprised that Minchiel suddenly asked him to hand in his request to take 10 days of vacation. Sang Yu notices that Minchiel is smiling which he rarely does and asks if something good happened. Minchiel remembers Jia saying goodbye to him and he responds 
responds by saying it's nice knowing someone is waiting for you at home. Sang Yu is confused, but Minchiel clarifies that his wife is at home. Sang Yu is shocked. He thinks Minchiel is messing with him until Minchiel confirms he got married last week. When they get to work, everyone is congratulating Minchiel and he hands them souvenirs from his honeymoon. But, before Sang Yu can get to work, Manager Sui and So pulls him aside and is angry that Minchiel got married, suggesting she liked him. Sang Yu responds by saying that it was unexpected because Minchiel didn't seem interested in girls. 33 year old Sui In's past is now summarized. She was seen as a child genius and just wanted a moderately okay guy. As she climbed to success, she remained single. She is annoyed that she can't find a decent guy. Then she realizes that this decent guy she wanted was Minchiel. But, her dreams of marrying Minchiel are now shattered. All she can do now is consult with the Sang Yu who went to university with her and is the quote unquote company Cupid. After work, Sang Yu and Suyin follow Minchiel home to check if he's really married. Then, they see Minchiel talking to a girl on the street just to see an angry Jia smoking. Jia is angry because Minchiel didn't call her when he was coming home late because she waited for him to eat dinner. Sang Yu and Suyin are skeptical that Jia is the type of girl Minchiel is interested in. Minchiel assumes Jia didn't want to eat with him because of what happened at breakfast, but Jia insists the problem is that he didn't call her. Minchiel asks if he is allowed to call her because Jia didn't like him calling her in fifth grade when he called to play. Jia said that she had to use the house phone, but is interrupted when he sees two people looking at them around the corner. Sang Yu and Suyin hide and Minchiel confirms that he is allowed to call Jia. Minchiel had another chicken breast smoothie for dinner. Jia recalls her past with Minchiel and remembers that she stopped hanging out with him around 5th grade. They were close when they were younger, but stopped because she was teased for hanging around a boy. Jia continued to ignore Minchiel throughout middle school. Jia now feels bad about being angry at Minchiel. Before she can apologize, Minchiel sends Jia her favorite food which is spicy chicken feet. Then, Jia barges into Minchiel's room. Instantly, Minchiel points out how she broke the rule, but Jia says that since there's a problem, they need to talk it out to fix it. Jia and Minchiel sit down to talk. Jia starts by complaining how Minchiel didn't get her beer to accompany her chicken feet. Jia gets to the point and says they haven't had a real conversation before, so she thought it would be good to talk and eat. Jia offers a beer to Minchiel, which he instantly rejects. Jia is concerned, but Minchiel just doesn't want to lose his gains. Instead of beat, Minchiel gets water and he asks what Jia wanted to talk about. Jia didn't have anything planned and is just going to make it up. Two hours later, Jia is drunk and talking about Minchiel and her playing games in the past. Then, Jia fell asleep. Minchiel abruptly wakes her up with an alarm and tells her to go to her room and sleep and that he'll clean up. Jia notes that she is drunk because she drank the alcohol she bought for two people. In her drunken state, Jia asks Minchiel if she can see his ear. When Minchiel approaches, Jia takes his glasses and points out how his eyesight is bad. Minchiel wants them back and pushes Jia against the wall. She is having fun until she realizes that Minchiel is very attractive without his glasses and they are very close together, so she gets embarrassed. Jia gives the glasses back and flees to her room. She is very embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. The next day, Jia stares at Minchiel as he leaves for work. She wants to apologize about last night, so things can go back to normal. When she attempts to say sorry, she gets nervous and says I meow because the cat said meow. Minchiel is confused. At work, Minchiel asks Sung Yu about Jia's meowing. Sung Yu thinks he is bragging, but Minchiel is genuinely confused. Sung Yu suggests that Jia was trying to be cute, but Minchiel says they aren't close enough to joke around together. Sung Yu, who supposedly has a doctorate in low biology, has a simple solution. He says that Minchiel needs sympathy. So, when he gets home, Minchiel meows at Jia. Jia falls to the floor in embarrassment. Minchiel states that Sung Yu said this would help, but Jia is mad that he told other people about it. To avoid situations like this, they added a clause in their contract to keep what happens between them a secret. A few days after, Suyin suggests that Minchiel host a housewarming party. When Minchiel tells Jia this, she is initially hesitant, but she eventually agrees to do it. Minchiel asks why but Jia insists. Housewarming parties are parties held after getting a new house or getting married. It is a party to ask for people's continued support in the future. It's not required, but it's something that only happens once or twice in your lifetime. You'd normally want to avoid it because it's a lot of work, but Jia wants to because Minchiel hates the idea. This is revenge for making her embarrassed yesterday. The next day, 
After protesting with Jia about how they don't need to have a party, he leaves for work with a smile. Jia has noticed a few key traits about Minxiel. Number 1. Minxiel is all about efficiency, almost like an eco-friendly robot. Number 2. Minxiel is weak to requests and will comply if you push enough. Based on these traits, Jia thinks Minxiel was going to tell the office that his wife didn't want to have a housewarming party. Jia gets embarrassed by what Minxiel refers to her at work. Jia starts preparations and starts to regret it. She doesn't know how to cook well and calls her mother for help. Soon, everyone arrives and Jia whispers to Minxiel that he should be nice to her. Everyone is amazed at the array of food Jia cooked. Minxiel clearly doesn't want to be there and even starts drinking. Sung Yu asks Suyin if she is satisfied in knowing Minxiel is actually married, but she isn't and has something prepared to test them. Sung Yu starts by saying they'd like to use this time to get to know Minxiel better. Everyone wrote down something they wanted to know about him. The first request is Suyin's. It is for them to kiss. Jia wants to hear the first request, but Sung Yu is apprehensive and skips to the next question. Jia says that to prevent a headache, they should just pretend to be a happy couple. The next question is when, where, and how did he propose? If they can't answer, they have to drink a whole glass of beer. Jia can't think of a good fake response, but Minxiel says that Jia proposed in a smoking area while he was eating chicken breast. While this is true, Jia decides to not say anything and drink. The next question is when and where was their first kiss? The problem is, they haven't kissed and even fake kissed at their wedding. Jia decides to drink but to her surprise, Minxiel says they kissed at 5 years old in kindergarten. Jia doesn't remember, but Minxiel reminds her that her nickname in kindergarten was the smooching ghost because she went around kissing everyone. Jia is mad that Minxiel would bring this up. The party soon ended and everyone went home, but Sung Yu and Suyin agree that their actions seem fake. When Sung Yu asks if they should look deeper, Suyin says no, Sung Yu is shocked and almost gets into an accident. Suyin says that it's okay because she didn't think she could force her way into their relationship. Sung Yu is surprised and decides they should go drink at a fancy barbecue place. Suddenly, they ended up waking up in the same bed together naked. Will this be the start of a romantic relationship? Back in Jia and Minchul's apartment, Jia explains why talking about them kissing in kindergarten and proposing in a smoking area is embarrassing. Jia thinks this is common sense, but remembers that he's dealing with Minxiel. Jia says they should pick another time for their first kiss. Before they can decide, Jia gets a call from her mom. Her mom called to say Spaghetti Man Loses His Way came out today. Spaghetti Man is a work that started hero movies. Jia asks if her mom watched the movie as soon as it came out and says yes. Immediately after, Jia's mom tries to spoil the movie but Jia ends the call before she gets the chance. Jia's family has a punishment system where if you don't watch a movie the day it comes out, someone who watches it will spoil it for everyone. The competition is fierce for big movies like Spaghetti Man. So Jia decides Minxiel and her need to watch it right now. Jia is enjoying herself with her popcorn, but Minxiel looks nervous. He says that this feels like a date. Jia is shocked. The movie was very good and they got embarrassed while trying to eat popcorn at the same time. Jia wonders what Minxiel thinks of the movie. Little does she know, Minxiel has been following the Spaghetti Man series for 20-some years. On their way out, Jia is talking about the movie with Minxiel and realizes that this feels like a date. Then, Jia gets pushed from behind and Minxiel catches her in his arms. Due to the sudden nature of the catch, they ended up accidentally kissing. Minxiel puts her down. Jia says that it didn't count because of the three-second rule and then runs away in embarrassment. Minxiel found Jia in the smoking area and made her air out her clothes. Minxiel then confirms the kiss didn't count because of the three-second rule. They then decide to go to lunch and Jia can't get the image of the kiss out of her head. Jia feels like she's overreacting, but Minxiel says he needs to get something off his chest and reveals the kiss was actually five seconds. Minxiel suggests they make the this first kiss, but Jia is mad and runs away because she couldn't look at Minxiel. Jia decided to move in with her sister. Jaimin and Jinu are not impressed. Then, the 13,261st Jia summit started. This included Jia from six different ages. She explains the situation and thinks that what Minxiel said was rude. Jia didn't want to go back to her parents' place, so she is at Jimin's place now. 15-year-old Jia asks if she can stay at a friend's place, but that is not possible. Jia's plan works because Jaimin owes her for bringing them together, giving them money for dates, and convincing them to get married. However, Jaimin is not happy. Despite the gift, Jia and Jaimin start talking. 
They note how Jimin's children take after Jia and when she tries to spoil the Spaghetti Man movie, Jia reveals she already watched it. Jimin asks what happened with Minchiel and guesses that Jia ran away after fighting with Minchiel. Jia confirms this. Jimin then agrees to let Jia stay there to babysit the kids so they can go out. Jia isn't happy about this, but she doesn't have a choice. After two hours, Jia realizes how hard it is to be a parent. The doorbell rings and thinking that it's a delivery, she opens the door to find Minchiel standing there. Jia slams the door shut and is wondering what he is doing there. One of the children says that if someone who looks like Minchiel comes, he should be let in because he has food. Jia has been set up. While the kids are eating ice cream, Jia and Minchiel get to talking. Minchiel reveals that Jaimin told him that she was here. Jia protests but Minchiel reminds her how the contract said they need to talk it out. Minchiel asks why she is mad. After pondering the question while feeding the kids ice cream, which Minchiel refuses to eat, she remembers it's not a big deal since they're both adults. After Jaimin and Jinu got back, they left together for the apartment. On their way back, Minchiel apologizes and says he should have thought about it and said sorry earlier. Jia says that Minchiel is only saying that because that is what Jia wants to hear. She continues by saying Minchiel should be punished with a forehead flick. Minchiel doesn't want one due to past forehead flicking trauma. Before the flick, Jia says she's mad because she doesn't want her first kiss to be an accident. Jia decides to kiss Minchiel on the forehead and says that this is their first kiss. At work, Minchiel is discussing with Sung Yu how Jia is mad that people think their first kiss was in kindergarten. Minchiel is worried about how to correct this. But, Sung Yu shouts that this isn't anything to worry about and explains how he has been very tired ever since the party. Minchiel says that they all left laughing and smiling so he shouldn't be tired. Sung Yu avoids the topic and Suyin appears. Sung Yu and Suyin are so embarrassed they can't even look at each other. Suyin flees when Minchiel waves. Sung Yu introduces himself again. He is very talkative and claims to have a doctorate in loviology, but it's all a lie. He is really an introvert who likes staying at home. But, since he has three sisters, he hears a lot of conversations. This made him an expert in reading clues from women. This skill was exhibited at a young age. He quickly became the god of dating because he matches so many together, but he never had a girlfriend before. After his entanglement in the sheets with Suyin, he was lost because Suyin apologized after. Sung Yu first met Suyin in college, where he was a freshman and she was a senior. Suyin was very demanding, but now she is just another adult. So, they decided to forget what happened that night. Now, Sung Yu and Suyin are now awkward every time they meet, indicating they aren't actually adults yet. Suddenly, in the elevator, Sung Yu breaks the silence by calling out to Suyin. But, Sung Yu could not get himself to talk about anything and was interrupted by a delivery man. As the day passed, Sung Yu was still caught up thinking about Suyin. Minchil notices this and asks him what's wrong while handing him a red ginseng stick. Sung Yu says nothing's wrong, but then comes to a profound realization. Minchil is married and could help solve his problem. Sang Yu asks for advice on how to break the awkwardness after a fight. Minchil recalls how he isn't supposed to talk about the marriage, but also remembers how he can be flexible at times. Minchil decides to be flexible and says that their last fight was resolved by Jia kissing him. This is not what Sung Yu wanted to hear. After work, Sung Yu is walking and is mad how he gives good advice, but no one can give him advice. He decides to call his second oldest sister, Yenju, for help. She is a popular romance novelist and influencer. Sung Yu explains his problem, stating that this is actually his friend's problem, not his. She understands the problem, but wants something in return. Sung Yu offers to get her two boxes of her favorite macarons, and she agrees. But, before Yenju starts, she asks if the friend Sung Yu is asking for his name Sung Yu Choi. After realizing he was caught, Sung Yu hung up the phone. But, not all hope is lost as he runs into Jia. The conversation is awkward as they make small talk, and shortly ends as Jia says she needs to go and runs away. Sung Yu feels like he recognizes Jia from somewhere. He asks Jia if she is flaming hot chicken feet. Jia is shocked and stops running. Initially, Jia acts like she doesn't know who that is. Sung Yu continues by saying that he is Yenju's little brother, listed off romance novels she's written, such as Is It Hot Because It's Summer and Why Would I Be A No for Miss No and even said he got her autograph. Jia's pen name is Flaming Hot Chicken Feet. In college, Jia chose a major to get a job rather than chasing her dreams. She barely got into university and didn't enjoy the social life. With nothing to do, she spent her time reading novels at her friend's place. Her friend was Yenju Choi. 
She was shy and quiet, but what made her special is that she wrote novels. Jia saw her works and decided that writing looked like fun. She was bored and decided to give it a try. Three months later, Jia won an award and officially became a writer. But Yenju appears jealous. She debuted soon after. Jia didn't expect to win, so she chose the silly pen name. Jia went with Sung Yu to talk at a cafe because she didn't have a choice. Sung Yu gives Jia the situation. Jia starts by asking if Sung Yu needs someone to listen to him or someone who gives him a push. Sung Yu is shocked. Jia continues by saying that Sung Yu is clearly interested in the girl. After hearing Jia's advice, Sung Yu leaves and comments how writers have no empathy, but it was still useful. Sung Yu calls Suyin. Suyin is shocked and picks up. Sung Yu says that he just wanted to hear her voice. Apparently, that wasn't enough, and he asks Suyin if he can come to her right now. Suyin is concerned because it's late, but Sung Yu reveals he's outside her house. He says it will only take a minute. Suyin doesn't want it because she is flustered, already took off her makeup and ready for bed. But she agrees and says she'll need 30 minutes to get ready. Suyin appears dressed in an intricate outfit. They go sit on the swings to talk. Sung Yu says he wanted to see her to give her some macarons. Suyin is impressed because the place always has a long line and they are delicious. This isn't the real reason Sung Yu called her out. Suyin starts to leave because she thinks that's all Sung Yu had to say, but Sung Yu stops her. He insists that they should stay on the swings because it is fun. Sung Yu musters up some courage and says they need to talk about that day. Suyin says they agreed to forget about it, but Sung Yu says he can't despite his best effort. Sung Yu says this is because this is his first time doing stuff like that. Suyin denies this because he is a relationship expert, but it is true. Sung Yu ends by saying that if she wants him to forget it, she will have to tell him how to forget it. But Suyin doesn't know how to do that and says she doesn't want to forget either. The scene abruptly jumps to Minchil's house. Jia is eating macarons and Minchil asks if you gained weight. Jia is shocked and almost chokes. Jia denies it, but Minchil was actually talking to Mouse. Mouse feels heavier than usual. Jia says that maybe it's because of the cold weather and Mouse is getting ready for hibernation. Minchiel agrees and decides to turn up the thermostat. The next morning, Jia tells Minchiel to have a great day at work and Minchiel surprisingly says see you tonight. Jia is concerned that perhaps Minchiel has caught on to Jia feeding Mouse snacks. Minchiel has an automatic pet feeder that dispenses 3.3 ounces of food per day. Jia saw a mouse crying for snacks because the feeder only gave a set amount, and she gave in. This is why mouse gained weight. Jia thinks mouse didn't gain a lot of weight because she would play with mouse after the snack. But, upon picking mouse up, mouse is heavier. But, mouse is not the only person who gained weight. Jia had been ordering delivery often to the apartment. Jia decides to step on a scale that she always ignored. The number is a lot higher than expected. The scale must be broken because her clothes still fit. But when she bent down, she heard a ripping noise and knew something needed to change. That evening, Jia asks Minchiel to teach her to work out. Minchiel is very happy and excitedly asks when they can start. Minchiel is very dedicated and workouts every day after work. When Jia tries, she is incapacitated after a few sets and she still has to do legs. Jia is transported to the beach. She says that an asteroid is going to hit Earth and this is their last night. She asks what they could do to make the last night meaningful. Minchiel says the answer is obvious. They will work on legs. Jia wakes up from her dream and is unable to move from being sore. Minchiel was excited that Jia wanted to work out, but is concerned at how much she is struggling. Back at the gym, Jia is doing lunges while Minchiel is cheering her on. At home, Minchiel prepares vegetables for Jia to eat and suggests she take a walk. Jia thinks that she should have lost for two six pounds by now, but the scale did not change. Back at the gym, Minchiel says if Jia does a routine for three minutes per day, she will improve. The first is a 60-second plank. This is hard and Jia needed to do three sets. After the sets, Jia thought she had died. Jia looks at Minchiel and is surprised how much he can bench. He was benching 350 pounds for reps. Then, a girl approaches Minchiel and asks if he's a personal trainer. Minchiel is confused but the girl continues by asking if he could teach her how to use the machines. Minchiel agrees and Jia is shocked. Minchiel shows her how to use the machines and how to do squats but she is touching Minchiel a lot. This upsets Jia. The girl falls in a cute manner and says it's her first time, 
but Jia knows it's not. Then the girl says Minxiul is totally her type and asks if he wants to go for coffee after. Jia is shocked and while she isn't supposed to get involved with his life, she shouts out to Minxiul. Minxiul declines the girl's offer by saying that he is married and announces that Jia is his wife. The entire gym and the girl are shocked. The girl flees from embarrassment. Minxiul and Jia leave the gym, but Jia is also embarrassed. Jia asks if this type of thing happens often and Minxiul confirms. But Minxiul always declines because he doesn't want to go to a cafe or bar after a workout because there's nothing to eat. But he would go if they had protein shakes. Every time, the girl stops coming to the gym three days later. Jia is put at ease because she knows nothing will happen. Jia is grateful that Minxiul is helping her. But she wants to quit because it's hard. On their way back, Jia notices that Minxiul is smiling. He says it's because he gets to work out with Jia. This makes it hard for Jia to quit. The next morning, Jia goes for a light jog to relieve muscle aches. At the track, a hooded man asks if she is Jia and Jia is shocked to see this man. Jia tries to run away, but since they are both out of shape and the man has asthma, they stop. The man gives Jia his business card. His name is Yang Duek Na and a former main producer. His business card has a ruler but it is wrong. He printed it wrong on purpose for marketing. Since Jia asked about it, the marketing worked. Yang Duek asks if Jia is still writing. Jia says that's insulting and he apologizes for what happened. He gets a call for a meeting and says they should get dinner sometime as he leaves. Jia crumbles up the card and starts jogging again. Jia returns home and Minxiul is concerned why they are eating a candle at dinner with fancy clothing and cutlery. Jia wanted to mix things up because they eat the same thing every day. Minxiul is uncomfortable and Jia feels bad about it. After dinner, she is in her room and anxious about how she keeps running into people from her past. Then, Minxiul knocks on her door wearing a suit and asks for a dance. Jia tries to close the door, but Minxiul blocks it. Jia concedes, and they sit on the sofa. Minxiul says that Jia was acting weird, so he wanted to cheer her up with a dance. Jia is confused but Minxiul says that this is what they do in the movies. Jia thinks this is romantic. Jia asks what type of movies Minxiul is referring to, and he says Bollywood movies. In those films, they dance all the time, including when they are sad and during gunfights. Minxiul continues by saying that when you do something alone, it is weird but when you do it together, it is fun. So, they might as well make the weird setting fun. Jia bursts into laughter and confirms that she said that. Jia then suggests that she has something better than dancing. They go to a barbecue spot and have pork belly and soju. Minxiul comments how they could have gone to somewhere nice with candles since they dressed up. But Jia says there is fire right in front of them. Jia says getting dressed up and going to a fancy restaurant is normal. But going dressed up to a barbecue place is weirder and more fun. Just thought of something fun. She picks up greens and tells Minxiul to say ah. Minxiul protests, but Jia says to play along. Minxiul realizes that Jia put peppers in the greens and has a funny reaction. They then go to karaoke. Jia is having fun. She never thought that doing something that is seen as weird would be exciting. But she had too much fun and got embarrassed. Minxiul on the other hand doesn't get embarrassed and just enjoys it. Jia then thanks Minxiul for hanging out with her and Minxiul is confused. Jia says that she'll repay him for the night and says they should go home. But before they leave, Minxiul grabs her hand and asks why Jia always has the last word and that he has something to say. He puts his hands on her chin as if he's preparing to kiss her. Jia remembers when she was 10 years old and watching a drama series. This is where she discovered that kissing is embarrassing. Jia asks her mom why they are kissing when it is embarrassing, but her mom says it's fine. Her mom later explained that those types of moments happen out the blue and Jia didn't understand. But now, she does. Jia puckers her lips and is ready to kiss. But, Minxiul has other plans. He picks a loose thread that was on her neck that was bothering him. Jia is mad. She grabs Minxiul by the tie and kisses him. Minxiul is confused, but Jia said it was complimentary. She continues by saying she did it because she wanted to. In the bathroom, Jia is embarrassed that she kissed Minxiul in a public place. Her excuse was nonsense. Minxiul is also in the bathroom washing his face. She does not know why she kissed Minxiul. After recalling key moments from her marriage, she laughs and has a realization. While they were kissing, several small Jia-like figures stop them and demand they kiss better. For a real kiss, you have to stick your tongue in their mouth and move it around. Jia confirms that she did this. Then, the small Jias tell them to kiss again and they do. But, this was all a dream and Jia woke up. 
Jia is surprised she had a dream about kissing Minchiel. She walks to the bathroom and upon opening the door, Minchiel is there. He just finished his shower and looks incredibly hot. Jia is embarrassed. Minchiel asks if Jia is in a bad mood, but she says she had a bad dream. She remembers them eating yesterday, and she slams her head on the table in embarrassment. Jia covers this up when Minchiel asks by saying there was a mosquito on the table. Jia believes that she is a victim of the suspension bridge effect, which means feelings of excitement towards someone increases during a time of anxiety. Every day is a time of anxiety because she is worried they might get caught and because she is working out. She concludes that this is a misinterpretation of feelings. Minchiel kneels down to Jia's level and asks if she is sick. Jia gets embarrassed because he is too close. She says she's fine so Minchiel is relieved. But, he wants to talk about last night. Before he gets the chance, Jia leaves. Minchiel is now at work and Sungyu notices Minchiel's mismatching socks and suggests that he had a hectic morning. Minchiel even threw out the full instant coffee packet instead of the end. While drinking, he remembers his kiss with Jia and doesn't know what to do. Minchiel and Jia are now at the gym to work out, but their interactions are awkward. It was just an accident, but Jia is still bothered by it. Jia thinks that Minchiel isn't bothered by it either because he doesn't have a visible reaction. After stretching, Minchiel says they will do the bench press. Jia is concerned because she saw a video of someone getting crushed by the weight and that she shouldn't do it. Minchiel says that while it could happen, he has a lot of experience so she'll probably be fine. Jia lies down and is scared of the bar. She says if she gets crushed, she is going to write Minchiel's name in her will even though she will be dead. Minchiel added to 20 pounds plates and Jia is ready to go. Jia is concerned but Minchiel says it's fine because it's only 60 pounds total. Minchiel lifts up the bar and tells Jia to give it a try. Jia is embarrassed and grabs the bar. While she is lowering the bar with Minchiel's help, Jia is worried because it feels like her heart is going to pound out of her chest. Jia is concerned that Minchiel is too close to her, so she starts doing reps on her own. After the bench, Jia thinks that they ended their relationship the way it is. Since she is sweating, she takes off her tracksuit but Minchiel puts it back on her. Jia is confused but Minchiel says that she might get a cold. Jia confirms by saying that she doesn't want a cold. But, she continues by asking if what Minchiel just said was nonsense. She can't stop a cold with her thin jacket. If she could, everyone else in the gym would be frozen. Jia notices Minchiel looking away and asks if Minchiel is bothered by Jia's clothing being too thin. Minchiel responds by taking his shirt off. Jia tries to stop him and Minchiel asks if taking his shirt off bothers her. Jia avoids the question but Minchiel continues by saying that it bothers him when Jia does it and aligns her jacket. On their way back, Minchiel was silent. Jia remembers that Minchiel has always been this way. When Jia hurt her leg when they were kids, Minchiel insisted on carrying her home even though he was shorter than her. It took them two hours to go home when it was normally a 20-minute walk, but Minchiel was happy about it. Back to the present, Minchiel says Jia did a good job and to keep it up tomorrow. Jia seems happy and grabs Minchiel's hand. Minchiel is confused. Jia says that he has a problem. He can let go. Jia then ponders that if they had a different start, how would it end up? The scene shifts to Yenju and Yengduek having dinner. He mentions that he recently saw Jia. Yenju asks who that is, but when Yenduek describes what she was doing and who she is, Yenju avoids the topic and says they should eat before their steak gets cold. Yenduek believes that she hadn't gotten over what happened. The scene shifts back to Sung Yu and Suyin on the swings. Before Suyin could say anything meaningful, she gets embarrassed and says they should talk another time. Sung Yu is mad and asks if he's too much for her. Suyin knows, but she's scared of changing their relationship because Sung Yu is the only person she can really talk to. But, Sung Yu isn't happy and points out that Suyin crossed the line first and initiated. Then, Sung Yu declared that he likes Suyin. Suyin agrees to go out with Sung Yu. Sung Yu and Suyin are now dating, and their car ride with Minchiel is awkward. At the office, Sung Yu is focused on his work and doesn't even eat lunch with Suyin. They say goodbye after work and exchange texts. This cycle repeats until Sung Yu realizes this is no different than before. Suyin has the same idea that they need something to break the pattern. Suyin texts first and asks if he has a sec, but she misspells it, which confuses Sung Yu. Suyin quickly corrects it, but once again clicks X instead of C. Suyin is very embarrassed, and Sung Yu calls her. Suyin picks up, and Sung Yu asks if Suyin meant to say if he had a second to talk and that he does have time to talk. 
Sung Yu's consideration had a huge effect on Su Yin, and she is silent. This silence makes Sung Yu think he messed up, but Su Yin then confirms that she meant to say that. They make small talk, but Su Yin doesn't have the courage to say anything, so she yawns. Sung Yu compliments her voice, and before Su Yin can hang up, Sung Yu suggests they go on a date. Su Yin is confused, but agrees. Sung Yu suggests that they go now, despite it being 11:38 p.m., because he wants to see her right now. But Su Yin angrily says that it's rude to show up out of nowhere when she isn't ready. They decide on a later day for the date. On the day of the date, they meet up, but Su Yin is wearing a trench coat with a hat, mask, and sunglasses, so no one recognizes her. They decide to go into the movies and question the odds that they run into something they know. Then they run into Jia. They exchange awkward greetings until Jia notices Su Yin. She remembers Sung Yu asking for advice and now knows he was successful. Jia congratulates Sung Yu, but Su Yin is concerned about what to do. Jia makes fun of them going on a date during the day and they leave. On their way out, Su Yin says that she notices Sung Yu and Jia were surprisingly close. Sung Yu then hugs Su Yin. Minchil then appears holding a spaghetti man branded tomato sauce that is limited to one per customer. Sung Yu hugs Su Yin so Minchil didn't notice them. When Minchil leaves, they separate and get embarrassed. They express how hot it is, which is from their embarrassment, and decide to get cold noodles for lunch. At the trending cold noodle place, two more people from the office were there so they had an awkward lunch. At karaoke, someone from work was there. Even the once famous cafe is closed. After getting ice cream, Sung Yu complains how they keep running into people at work. Then, he notices that Su Yin has ice cream on her cheek and decides to clean it up with his finger and lick it. Su Yin and Sung Yu are embarrassed, but Sung Yu is still happy about the day. As the day comes to an end, they don't want to say goodbye, but they've done everything they planned and can't think of anything else. Sung Yu suggests they need to get going, and Su Yin agrees. Suddenly, they appear in front of a motel, and Sung Yu is in awe of its size. Sung Yu cannot think straight and grabs Su Yin's hand and pulls her into the building. To her surprise, they are in an arcade, not the motel. But Sung Yu thinks Su Yin is disappointed they didn't go into the motel when in reality, she is embarrassed that her mind is in the gutter. Sung Yu does not know what to do. He grabs Su Yin and says that he remembers she wanted this fox plush. Su Yin denies it, but Sung Yu insists she spent $50 trying to get it. Sung Yu declares that he will get the fox. This is his chance to make it up to her. He is determined to get the fox. After spending $120, the owner gave them a similar looking fox. Sung Yu thinks he's screwed. They couldn't do any of the activities in peace, and it was the worst date imaginable. They arrive at Su Yin's house, and Sung Yu apologizes for the awful first date. But Su Yin had fun today. The cold noodles were delicious. Trying to get the fox was fun, and trying to avoid people was exciting. Sung Yu is embarrassed and insists that he will get her a bigger fox on their next date. They part ways and Sung Yu goes home to his parents and declares he loves them. Su Yin puts the fox next to a bunny, plush Sung Yu got her in the past and is happy. Back at Minchil's house, they are watching Spaghetti Man on the sofa and Jia is sleeping on Minchil's lap. Back earlier in the day, Jia had gotten a call from her family and was about to get the Galaxy Wars movie spoiled. So, Jia and Minchil go watch the movie. Jia is on a diet, so she gets Diet Coke with popcorn. But, the movie was boring and Jia is in agony because she suggested they watch it. Jaiman knew how bad it was and suggested it anyway. Back at the house, Jia decides that she's going to watch a real movie. Jia says that Minchil can do anything he wants, but he sits on the sofa and watches with her. Minchil is eating carrots and cucumbers during the movie, and Jia thinks this is weird. But, she ended up mindlessly eating them during the movie. They ended up watching three movies which brings us back to the present. Jia fell asleep on Minchil's lap and was embarrassed. Jia quickly moves away and asks how long she was like that. Minchil says about one hour. Jia is worried that something happened while she was asleep. So, she asked Minchil if something happened and he starts talking about things that happened in the movie, not real life. Jia notices that the only time Minchil has shown emotion is when she asked him to work out. She realizes that she is just dragging Minchil into things. Jia decides to lay down and poke Minchil with her feet, stating that she has long legs. Minchil is confused, asking if she has a reason. She does not. Minchil decides to massage Jia's feet. He does not have a reason for this either, but Jia is shocked. Jia says it tickles but Minchil continues because he is concerned about her muscles being tight. Jia is having a good time and remembers that Minchil has always been good at stuff like back rubs. This is until Minchil pressed her foot too hard. 
causing Jia to shoot up and her face to be right next to Minchul's. Jia gets embarrassed and it seems they are about to kiss. But, Jia's foot starts to cramp and Minchul starts to meow in response. Jia is confused but he insists that this is to scare away the cramp. Jia is now washing her face and realizes that she is always the one embarrassed. But, that is not important because they almost kiss during the massage, which is a problem. Everything was there and it was going to happen if Jia didn't cramp. Jia remembers that Minchil didn't look like he was against the idea. She wants Minchil to make the first move for once, but then she realizes that he is generally clueless. Then, Jia tastes something bitter and thinks it's cucumber. But, Jia didn't eat cucumber during the movie because she doesn't like it. There is only one possibility. Minchil must have kissed when she was asleep on his lap. Before Minchil leaves for work the next day, Jia asks if nothing truly happened. Minchil says nothing happened and when Jia pressed about it, Minchil got embarrassed and left. Jia now knows something happened and planned to mess with Minchil for the next few days. But, Minchil started to avoid Jia at all costs. Jia respects Minchil's privacy, but it's almost as if he is avoiding all conversation with Jia. After a few days of this, Minchil even texted her that he is not going to the gym. Jia is shocked and decides to start typing a long message. But, then Minchil calls her and she leaves for a bar. When he arrives, Minchil is sleeping on the table and Sung Yu is crying. From the table, Jia thinks they are both extremely drunk. Jia realizes that since Minchil is red from drinking too much, Sung Yu is the source of the problem. When Jia confronts Sung Yu, he says that Minchil is the one who wanted to drink. Sung Yu mentioned that Minchil seemed off for the last few days and was making mistakes. He asked if Jia and Minchil had a fight in the taxi ride home. Jia ponders this question and Minchil drunkenly asks if Jia is there while leaning on her. During this, Minchil tries to kiss Jia. When Jia says no, Minchil recalls that Jia said it's up to the person that gives a kiss. Jia denies this. Jia actually said it's complimentary service, but it's the same thing despite Jia trying to deny it. The driver asks if they are newlyweds. Jia gets embarrassed and realizes that they are acting like a newlywed couple. Then, the driver comments how Jia's husband must love her, and Jia remembers that Minchiel is actually her husband. When Jia says Minchiel is a thorn in her side, the driver asks if they got in a fight. Jia decides they should go somewhere other than Minchiel's apartment. Minchiel soon wakes up, and he and Jia are in a Ferris wheel. Jia had gotten all access passes to an amusement park. Since barely anyone else is on the Ferris wheel, they can use the pass to keep going around the Ferris wheel. Minchiel tries to get off, but Jia stops him. Jia then asks Minchiel if he remembers passing out at the bar. She believes he was drinking because of her and the contract says that they need to talk it out. Jia wanted to talk about it, but Minchiel kept avoiding her. Because of all the trouble she's been through, Minchiel owes it to her to stay on the Ferris wheel. A Jia Han-sponsored event occurs and they begin their first round of truth or dare. Minchiel is confused. Jia explains that you need to answer the question truthfully or you get punished, which is a forehead flick. If he lies, the game ends. Minchiel doesn't want a forehead flick and this makes Jia remember kissing his forehead. Minchiel still doesn't want to since truth or dare makes a fool of the person. Jia says that this won't happen because she won't lie due to her having an unpleasant memory relating to Yenju. Jia provokes Minchiel by saying that this is his chance to ask her anything and even flick her. Minchiel agrees and asks who goes first. They play rock paper scissors for it and Jia wins. Jia's question is if Minchiel likes her. Minchiel gets embarrassed and doesn't answer. The countdown is up and Jia flicks his forehead. It is Minchiel's turn and he asks if she likes him. Jia says that she doesn't not like him and gets embarrassed. Minchiel is confused and tries to ask another question, but Jia stops him. Jia starts her next question. She says she could taste cucumbers after the movie even though she doesn't eat cucumbers. Also, Minchiel started avoiding her after that night. Jia asks if Minchiel did something while she was sleeping. Minchiel is speechless. Jia continues by asking if Minchiel kissed her that night. Jia says that there's no point in avoiding it because they're going to stay there until she gets the answer. Minchiel says that he didn't kiss her. Jia ends the game and declares Minchiel is lying. Minchiel says that he did kiss her that night, just not on the lips. He kissed her forehead. The reason she tasted cucumbers is because he put his finger on her lips. Minchiel says that he was looking at her face while she was sleeping and it just happened. Jia is confused why they had all this trouble because Minchiel kissed her once. Minchiel apologizes. But Jia feels disappointed, suggesting that she wanted something more. Minchiel apologizes again. 
Jia says he doesn't have to, but he is apologizing for what he is about to do. Fireworks go off and Minxiul kisses Jia on the lips. Jia is shocked that Minxiul is the one initiating. The kiss was bitter because Minxiul was eating cucumbers at the bar. Jia pulls away because of the taste, and before she can ask a question, Minxiul passes out. Jia is struggling to take Minxiul out of the Ferris wheel. Jia and Minxiul refer to this night as the first great drinking apocalypse. Because of this, they added no kissing after eating cucumbers to their contract. As Minxiul leaves for work, he says that he thought she would be more mad. Minxiul says that since he can't kiss after eating cucumbers, then he can when he hasn't. Jia demands Minxiul to leave for work. At work, Minxiul apologizes to Sung Yu about last night. While Jia is vacuuming, she gets a notification on her phone. Her stock portfolio had gone down significantly. Jia is devastated. Jia is not a freelancer who's not working. She is a freelancer who doesn't need to work. The royalties and dividends from stocks she owns is enough to pay the bills. She is quite loaded. Well, she was loaded. Jia thinks her stock app is broken. Why else would the value be falling so much? She lost 9.28%. Jia decides to wait it out because selling is for noobs. Her stocks went down before so it's fine. For days later, she has lost 18.18% and Minxiul is concerned by her behavior. There is news that a businessman is getting a divorce. So Jia sells her stocks. The next morning, the stock is up 12.3%. Jia is very angry and starts cussing the businessman out. Jia decides to go out and eat. Jia realizes that if she buys stocks when they're down, she's basically getting a discount. Jia continues to sell her stocks low and buys high. Jia is now at the gym and her stocks are worth less than her original investment. Minxiul asks if Jia is going to work out and she says yes. Minxiul also asks if Jia has been playing a game on her phone since she's always looking at it. Jia decides to lie to not worry Minxiul and says she has been watching a show. After their workout, Jia's investment goes even lower and she deletes the app because she can't stand to look at it. Later that day, there was a scandal with the businessman which caused the stock to plummet further. She should have sold her stocks. But if she never sells, she never actually lost any money. This is perfect logic for Jia. Then, Minxiul appears and asks Jia a question. He looks very concerned and asks if Jia likes someone else. Jia is shocked. She denies it and Minxiul said that saw a video about married couples. It said that if your spouse starts acting differently, they might have someone else. Jia is still confused until she realizes she checked off all the boxes for suspicious behavior. Minxiul pointed out that she also lied at the gym when she said she was watching a show. Minxiul says that Jia has a tendency to share interesting and funny things with others, but Jia didn't share the name of the show with Minxiul. Jia thinks Minxiul took it the wrong way, so she tells him the truth. Minxiul is shocked that Jia lost that much. But, Jia just didn't want Minxiul to worry. Minxiul is concerned and asks if it's really okay that she lost all her savings and what is going to do about living expenses. Jia says that she will just work for money, but it is not actually fine. But what is worse than losing her money is the impression this left on Minxiul. Minxiul suggests that he could pick up more of the bills, but Jia stops him. Jia says that they should take care of their own issues when it comes to money which is why she didn't tell him at first. This is a matter of pride for Jia. When she moved out, she promised herself that she would handle her own life. She is proud she hasn't had to borrow money from anyone. Minxiul stands up and says that he trusts Jia while touching her ears. Jia is embarrassed and smacks Minxiul on the forehead. Minxiul was simply giving Jia his energy by touching her ears. Minxiul says they used to do this in the past and they would yell energy infusion when doing it. Jia smacks Minxiul again and leaves. She is angry that he would bring something from the past up and once she leaves, she realizes touching someone's ears is a very sensual thing. One week later, Jia is going to job interviews and Minxiul says good luck before she leaves. Jia has been too lucky throughout her life, but her struggle to get a job starts now. However, while walking, Truck Kun appears in front of her. If you like this video, please support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. Also, comment below which series I should do next. Thank you for watching, see you next time.